so there were two different kind of uh, shock pressures that will be generated during an internal explosion so first one is the gas pressure in that uh, confined space and the shock pressure because of uh, the shock itself and the reflections so those two types of pressures can be idealized by these two types of uh, uh, time histories or pressure histories so the parameters that you see here for example uh, let me use this one for example you see here this reflected over pressure and then it decays at uh, till time t0 and similarly peak gas pressure which decays with time and reaches to zero at a time tg so all these parameters can because you know these are the idealized time histories as i also explained in case of air blast in uh, previous lectures so these idealized histories have been generated based on a lot of experimental data lot of observations and uh, understanding of the topic so all these parameters if you know for example if you know pr if you know t0 if you know pg if you know tg you can very easily uh, get these curves these lines and then uh, you will get a over pressure time history for your design purpose so now we will see one example uh, how to compute the peak gas pressure uh, using the empirical charts and relations so i will just explain now so for example uh, consider this example there is a this cubical room right which has a dimension of 3 by 3 by 3 just for example and there is a this window is there in that room which is open or maybe you can consider that uh, the after explosion the glass is broken or window is open so there is a venting space the dimension of the window is uh, 600 by 600 in millimeters and there is a charge weight of 380 kg this one which explodes inside this uh, chamber and our target is that we want to calculate the peak gas pressure there are empirical procedures empirical charts uh, which are available in the design manuals uh if you remember i gave one exercise in that exercise i asked you to write the names of different kind of manuals which are available for the blast resistant design so basically all those manuals are filled with so many empirical charts so many design charts which can be very conveniently used for calculating all those uh, empirical parameters so this is just uh, one example from one of them so let us see how those empirical charts work so design charge weight uh, we can calculate so in the ufc guideline if you remember from that exercise there is a one guideline unified facilities criteria which is very popularly used when we want to design uh, our structures for accidental explosions or maybe uh, you can say low yield explosions not for nuclear so in that guideline it is mentioned that we can take a 20% factor of safety uh, for getting the design charge weight so just uh, calculate so all of you please uh, bring out your calculator a4 sheet and uh, try to do some calculation so from the previous slide we has a charge weight of 380 kg with this 380 kg and with this rule uh, calculate the design charge so it will be 405 456 kg so simply multiply by 1.2 and you will get your design charge weight uh, my suggestion is that you keep doing all these calculations with the calculator with the with your a4 sheet and pen and paper because this will help you in uh, quickly understanding whatever is happening after that we need to know the internal volume of the room and we need to know how much charge weight is present 
in that particular internal volume so basically weight to volume ratio so these two factors are very important when we are deciding the peak gas pressure because if there will be a very large volume certainly the average pressure will be smaller and suppose if the charge weight will be very high certainly the internal pressure will be also high so that's why we need to know the internal volume of the room and charge weight to internal volume ratio this will give you an idea of average peak gas pressure caused by that particular internal explosion right so calculate the internal volume of the room and uh, weight to volume ratio so just quickly check these values are you getting the same so here this w that you will use will be this 456 kg not 380 kg because we have applied a 20% factor of safety for the design purpose so once you calculate charge weight to internal volume ratio uh i have converted this to pound per feet cube right the purpose is because all the charts that you will see in ufc manual or um, usually american manuals they are generally in the foot pound second uh, scheme and generally in india we use the mks or si system uh so that's why we have to convert this to the fps system because that chart is available in pound per feet feet cube that's why i have converted this otherwise there is no requirement so once we have done that so this conversion as i suggested in one of the class this can be very uh, done very easily using that google unit converter no need to remember all those things that can be done very easily with the google converter so now there is a chart design chart from which we can read the maximum gas pressure so this is the chart that is given in this uh, ufc guideline so see on the x axis uh, there are charge weight to free volume pound per cubic feet on x axis so this x axis in the logarithmic scale and y axis is also in the logarithmic scale and on y axis we have maximum gas pressure pg that is in pound per square inch psi so we have one uh, that charge to charge weight to volume ratio of 1 pound per cubic feet right so we see here we go on the chart and we read this value this one so this will be somewhere around uh, 2500 or something like that 600 something like that on the log scale so that's how we get the our peak gas pressure which is in psi pound per square inch so we have to again convert that to si system so let us see so we get our peak gas pressure 2650 psi and that can be converted to the mega pascals which comes out to be 18. so that's how we can calculate our uh, peak gas pressure similarly we can also calculate the reflected pressure that i have shown there in that particular uh, 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 chart but i have not shown that calculation here because that is also very much similar to this kind of calculation so the basic idea here is to understand that suppose if you are going into the industry or if you are going for some research you should know that there are several manuals several relevant manuals from which you can read such charts you can get such charts and using those design charts you can very easily compute your peak gas pressure peak reflected pressure or even the durations also so this idea you should keep in in mind and that's why you should know very clearly that are uh, there are several such guidelines no need to remember no need to cram all those data or records but as a engineer as a designer you should uh, remember that there are things like that which can be used uh, when as and when required that was the thing so now i am going to explain you the next 
uh, assignment that uh, that is based on this simple uh, question that you have to do first of all you have to digitize the chart shown in the previous slide what do i mean by digitization so let us go there so this is the chart right so there are two ways uh, right now this chart is available in form of a graph so manually you can read it but how can you make it read to a computer so basically you have to digitize it so for digitizing there are some open source softwares which you can just go on google type graph digitizer right it is freely available you have to put this graph in that particular chart and digitize all these points so how you will digitize maybe you will take one point here 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 like this and then you will have a different points so what you can do on this particular graph you can fit a straight line for that straight line you can get very easily a regression equation now using that regression equation you can predict your peak gas pressure for a given charge to volume ratio so in this assignment i told that fit a regression equation to the digitized chart once you have fitted that equation then you have to write a simple two three lines of matlab code to compute the peak gas pressure due to the internal explosion so in that particular code the you have to supply an input of w or maybe you can uh, write your code like that that you supply the charge weight and you supply the dimensions of the cubicle room dimensions of the window and based on these input and that digitized chart your code will give the this answer this 18.3 mpa this answer should be given by your code so that code basically be used for calculating the maximum gas pressure so this is a very simple exercise very simple code so this i think this can be done very quickly this is the easiest till now so this will be an individual assignment which you can do very easily i think uh, there should be no uh, doubt in this sir isme regression equation kaise nikalni hai pardon Uh, the second point of the assignment fit the regression yeah. equation to the digitized chart yes 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 so ye matlab usse digitizer se aayega ya khud banani hai no 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 this you have to see what digitizer will do digitizer will do this thing suppose it will give you some points like some digital points it will give you right and then so this is pg this is weight to volume ratio you have all these points on all these points you have to fit a straight line or whatever curve you want to fit based upon the trend of these points so this you can do very easily in excel very easily in excel there are some uh, so that that will give you a kind of equation pg equal to some uh, say m times w upon v plus c right y equal to mx plus c the straight line equation so m and c are your regression parameters that you can very easily calculate from the excel excel in excel there is a uh, regression fit when you plot any graph in excel you can easily fit a regression line okay so that will give you m and c so this equation you can directly use in your matlab code right okay anything else anyone want to discuss or should i move ahead if this is very simple exercise uh, you will uh, sir, i am sure that you will enjoy while digitizing maybe for digitization i can help you with this one so so maybe here on google you can graph digitizer so there are some uh, for get data graph digitizer so this is a open source code simply download it 
put your data there okay and it will dis, dis, this will uh, disguise the scanned graphs and this will get give you original xy data so once you have the xy data that data can be used for anything whatever analysis you want to do so just try this one i think uh, 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 this will also be helpful if you are going to do in future suppose if you are writing some paper or doing some research sometimes you will not have the experimental data from your lab but you have to get the data from already published papers so mostly the data is given in form of graphs so how you will use that data so graphs cannot be used you need to digitize it so this tool will be very handy when you will be uh, using the published graphs or published data in your own research so this is a very good tool and uh, you should start using this one now let us start the next slide so suppose now we have a situation where explosion happens inside a building and we are interested in calculating pressures outside so there can be two situations one situation explosion happening inside a building and we are interested in calculating pressure outside because of that or there can be explosion outside and we want to calculate the pressure inside the building so this kind of situation may happen suppose if this is some petrochemical factory and there is a some mishapping inside so there will be some vents some opening through which the blast pressure will leak out and that may impose some pressure outside the building so this kind of situation this kind of situation can occur in those scenarios so pressure at a point outside the building is due to the leakage from the vent so there can be dump, some build, uh, some uh, windows can be there some outlet vents can be there or sometimes what happens that uh, if there is a glass or something is there because of this explosion that glass can break once the glass is broken after that the pressure will leak out so the pressure inside the building will reduce but similarly some pressure will also leak outside which will cause pressure on the outside structures in this it is important to understand that suppose if some point is there right outside the the window or maybe right outside the vents so those will experience obviously comparatively higher pressures compared to the points which are outside or maybe farther from the direct vent opening so different points will have different pressure and location of target point related to the vent is also important criteria in calculating such blast uh, pressures now we consider another scenario where explosion is happening outside the building so this is something very important for us for example now let me uh, uh, make it more interesting or maybe you should say more uh, relevant in current scenario so nowadays you might be hearing uh, what is happening in ukraine right so daily some bombarding is happening people are suffering and lot of things are happening and uh, yesterday i was uh, seeing in the news that the government is saying that uh, people should go to the bunkers and people should stay inside the buildings or maybe some kind of shelters right so now you understand what is the importance of such civil shelters such defense shelters such bunkers even today uh, in uh, current scenario that we can safeguard our people we can safeguard our country we can safeguard our uh, public our kids in those buildings in those shelters if those shelters are properly designed for these kind of uh, blast loading these kind of uh, impact loading so sometimes uh, we should have some protective structures that's why this protective engineering is going to become more and more important uh, in near future and lot of consulting lot of research will be soon focused on protective structures in near future and lot of opportunities you may get in industry if you have a command on this kind of extreme loading 
designing your structures for extreme loading. That's why this course is also very important in nowadays scenario, as a from viewpoint of a civil engineer. So, for example, uh, there is a leakage blast. Uh, sorry, there is a blast outside the building. So, suppose this is a, a, a bomb thrown by that uh, uh, Russia, and this is some shelter house in Ukraine, right? So there will be some windows or some vents obviously in a building. So the glass can broke, some damage can happen and that blast pressure can leak in south, inside that building and then that particular pressure can be detrimental to the people inside the building. So it will be, uh, 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 if we can try to design our facades or we can try to design our uh, internal structure in a way that the effect of that leakage blast pressure is minimized, then as a civil engineer, we will be able to do our duty uh, completely. So let us understand how the pressure inside that room will vary because of this kind of uh, leakage blast. So please be very attentive now uh, because this will involve some calculations and uh, that will be very useful. Okay. So suppose this is a point PI that you see here, right? Where we are interested in computing the pressure. Pressure at a point inside the building is due to the leakage from vent, and that's what we are interested to compute. So again, there are some approximate methods and there are some advanced methods. Advanced methods are dependent upon the computational fluid dynamics, which we are not covering in this course. In this course, our target is to understand the design approaches that are being used in the different uh, consulting firms and in different uh, uh, protective design uh, technologies. So that is our main target in particular course. So that's why we will be focusing how quickly and easily you can have a tentative estimate of pressure inside the building on this particular point. So delta PI basically represents how the pressure will increase with time in different time steps. So delta PI is the you can understand like suppose you are starting uh, to calculate the over pressure history at this particular point. So initially the PI will be equal to zero because there is explosion just happened and it will take some time to reach inside the building. So initially PI will be zero and after that then slowly slowly PI will increase. So delta PI represents that increase in particular in this particular pressure. So more the area of this window more will be the increase in the pressure. Right? If we have large area completely open, obviously there will be more pressure increase compared to suppose if this is completely concrete building, uh, com concrete wall and no opening, then certainly delta PI will be significantly or small or it can be negligible also. So first observation is this. Second observation is because all empirical relations are mostly based on the intuition and, and uh, observations. So that's why we should understand this more the volume of this particular area is smaller will be the pressure on this particular point or smaller will be the average pressure on this particular point. Am I online or offline? Are you guys able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Please bata dena mujhe. Uh, in one of the class I was completely <laughs> offline and I was speaking and then I came to know I was offline. Anyways. So, Suppose if this volume is very big, so average pressure on this point will also be small. So it is change in pressure is inversely proportional to the volume that we are considering for calculating our average pressure. Now this delta PI can be related. So A upon V, it is the same as VI. So A upon or VI is basically internal volume. I have missed the, um, let me correct here. 
and so here it should not be i so 1 upon b so a upon b and this delta t represents the time step and this cl is basically the leakage coefficient so this is a empirical parameter which comes out of several experiments that have been done we will see how to calculate cl so a upon b the dip, these are the dimensions of the opening and the structure delta t is the time step so we can calculate this change in pressure internal pressure using this empirical equation this simple empirical equation which is being used in the current design practices and then we can compute the pressure at a next time step by multi by adding delta pi to the pi so now i will explain it in a more clear manner so now be attentive i am going to explain it let p is the external pressure right so from where this external pressure is coming anyone from x blast from air blast correct yes sir so this you have already computed this external pressure you have already computed i am i am asking so this yes sir have you already computed this external pressure yes sir maximum gas pressure you should no 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 this is the yeah that's why i asked this question. so maximum gas pressure was inside the building so that was something else that we discussed in the previous slide so we this, did it in ppos uh, peak over pressure very good now this was your the last matlab assignment now you are speaking mm. good good so now you are able to know. so this was your last matlab assignment right that you did so that's why i asked this question so now i understand you are able to understand so this air blast thing you have already computed okay so we know the external pressure so if we know w means yield of the explosion if we know distance of the building from the explosion point we can very easily compute p this exercise you have already done your in your last matlab exercise so p t t this right this you have computed tp positive phase duration this you have completed p zero or p f p s o whatever okay so this you have already complete computed this graph you have already computed in your previous uh, exercise right so that's how we know the external pressure now we are interested here in computing the p i which is internal pressure inside the building due to leakage from the vent from the opening from the window right now we want to compute this we already have this now we want to compute this inside a building so just now i told that this can be computed using the simple formula if we know the change in delta pi at different times so this can be computed using cl that is leakage coefficient i explained multiplied by area of the opening and 
volume of the building inside the room that we are interested to compute multiplied by the delta t the time step i will explain i will explain okay don't worry so can anyone tell me what is the unit of cl just see this equation simple dimensional analysis and uh, just tell me this uh, uh, unit of cl let me see who can tell tushar so it comes out to be delta pi in 12 by t so it should be pascal uh, meter per second yeah. very good yeah. very but yeah that's true that's true really i appreciate so this is the correct one but maybe in the case of blast sometime it is written as kilopascal meter per millisecond because this time step will be of the order of millisecond and this uh, pressure will be of the order of kilopascals so for the convenience we can also use this one but this is absolutely correct right so now let us start what is happening at different time so at time t equal to 0 right at initial time so internal pressure at time t equal to 0 p0 is equal to how much zero sir aya very P. good zero because in initially there is no pressure very good now we want to know what is delta p after this we should apply for the next time step right let us see so now we know that this is our over pressure time history i am showing it here again this pt t for external it is like this right tp this is time zero this is p p p over pressure so at t equal to 0 what is your p external p external at t equal to 0 any p p p over very good very good so this is your p over pressure at t equal to 0 that we already know from this table now this cl that we want to input here this you will see soon i will show you a table after this that this cl is something that depends upon the pressure difference between external and internal so basically cl right and pressure difference external pressure is p internal pressure is p i right so now suppose this is your building right and this is some opening right here pressure is pi internal here pressure is p outside and this is causing some leakage okay so if this pressure difference will be higher there will be more leakage and if this pressure difference will be less there will be less leakage you can understand this from that this is kind of equilibrium type of situation because suppose if the pressure outside is same as the pressure inside there should be no leakage there is a pressure balance and suppose if there is a higher pressure outside so this will push inside and there will be more leakage so this leakage coefficient depends upon the pressure difference outside the building 
inside the building right so the graph of cl with p minus pi will be some something like this more the pressure difference more the six uh, more the leakage less the pressure difference less will be the leakage so that's how this empirical cl has been correlated with the pressure difference if we know the pressure difference we can very easily compute the cl okay so now let us see how do we do it suppose so this is our again external pressure graph right this is p0 again this is tp again right so what we will do we will discretize this curve how do we discretize we will divide in small time steps delta t then 2 delta t like this we reach up to tp so generally this delta t the time step that we take is usually tp upon 10 to tp upon 20 usually the practice so suppose if your tp is say uh, 1 millisecond so your delta t will be 0 0.1 millisecond right so at each point one millisecond you can take the value of p0 so your pg equation of p0 can uh, p sorry equation of pt can anyone tell does anyone remember what was the equation of pt friedlander equation you have written the matlab code just tell me shiva yes, sir tell me pt P P zero into yes one minus yes P by T P yes uh, into okay E power minus B minus B into T by T P very good very good right we have this equation so using this equation we can compute our pt at different time intervals so at t equal to 0 at t equal to delta t 2 delta t 3 delta t like this till tp we know this at each time step now at t equal to 0 we know that pi equal to 0 so what will be the pressure difference at t equal to 0 p minus pi what is p p is p0 what is pi 0 pressure difference p0 now we have pressure difference so from this pressure difference we will get the value of cl from empirical chart i will show okay once we have cl we can compute the delta p for the next step that is delta p i plus one for the next step what was that cl into a upon b into delta t now deepak deepak are you there deepak Deepak hai ke nahi hai? Let me check. Keep. Why I am not able to? Okay. Kala? Deepak is not there. Oh, Deepak is there. Why Deepak you are not speaking? Anyways, who else is there? Let me check. Yati? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yati? Uh, Deepak? Yes. Achha, Deepak is here. Let's ask Deepak. Se pooch leta hu. Deepak, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, so, Deepak, now you please tell me that 
how do we compute this so what is delta t in this equation delta t is delta t is a tp tp p upon 10 sir delta t whatever ah, yeah maine abhi bataya na i have told this uh, so we know the delta t what is a is area sir area of what area of sir cross section sir which cross section tushar yes sir area is the area of the opening very good very good and uh, 6 by 600 by 600 okay. yeah very good very good and uh, deepak what is v v is volume volume of what volume of sir i think sir a structure those structure we have to design okay 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 and abhishek what is cl Abhishek? Sir, coefficient. Coefficient of what? Sir, it depends on the pressure difference. Sir, I forget the name of that coefficient, but yes. it depends on yes. the pressure the difference. So now yes. from, from the empirical chart, we have information about the CL. We have information about the AV from the structure. We have delta T decided from here. So now we can compute the delta PI. So what will be the at t equal to delta t what will be pi now yati will tell me internal pressure at yati yes sir ah ab bataiye what is the pi at t equal to delta t at next time step what is pi uh, sir we can uh, add uh, uh, p uh, delta p to initial uh, so, pi which initial pi zero. Initial PI is? P initial PI was 0. Very good. We can add uh, this delta PI plus 1 to this 0 value to get PI value. Very P good. is equal to delta T. Excellent. Excellent. So that's how we get our PI. After this, again, what we have to calculate? Because now we have at second time step. Now we have to move on to the third time step. So, Shiva, can you tell what will be the next step? What we want to compute now for the third time step? Yes, sir. Uh, again, PI is equal to that uh, uh, delta PI plus 1 plus uh, delta PI plus 2, sir. No, that is okay. So, but what we need to calculate for that? We don't know delta PI plus 2, right? Uh, yes, sir. So again, we have to start computing this delta uh, PI plus uh, CL into A by V that formula. Okay, that is true. That is true. But we need to calculate pressure difference. Y yes, sir. Yes. Now again, we need to compute the pressure difference. So now in this pressure difference, we have to take this external pressure, right? At T equal to 2 delta T. Right, and we will put this PI that was computed in the last step. That's how we will get our next pressure difference, and then this cycle will continue, and we will get some distribution of uh, some profile of internal pressure. Inside the building. So this is pressure outside the building. This is a pressure profile inside the building. That's what we need to calculate. Now, so I will save this so that you will have access to say keep. Uh, okay, I have saved it. So I will share all those slides. So no need to worry. So this using this you can understand very easily now i am going to explain you the next thing which is another assignment based on this calculation that we have done so 
no calculation is complete till we do the assignment on that okay so now i am going to share another paper uh, in which you will get the values of your cl and using that values of cl you can very easily write your matlab code to compute the leakage pressure inside a building due to the explosion outside the building your code must plot the time history for external and internal pressure time history on the same graph and then compare the two so this you have already done external you have done now in your matlab assignment which you have submitted last night and now you will work on the internal pressure history because of this leakage phenomena right so let me uh, explain quickly so uh, this was your uh, uh, method one that i have explained i will share this paper and you have to just focus on method one i will highlight also so let me highlight so that you okay so in this method one it is the same thing what i have explained and in table one you have the leakage pressure coefficient as a function of pressure differential that is p minus pi p external minus p internal this is the same thing that i explained so with pressure differential you have the leakage pressure coefficient cl right so this data you have this data you can use in computing your cl once you do that then using this example that has been explained here you can generate your interior pressure building a uh, interior pressure inside the building so this is very straight forward and maybe you can very easily match your data with these uh, your code output can be validated with respect to this data so it is not difficult you simply go i will share this you simply go and read this uh, highlighted portion and you will understand very easily just follow the slides and the process you can also read this one this will help you in understanding the process this is the same what i have explained today and in case if you have any difficulty you just talk to me or if you want i can uh, help you with that so no need to worry about that and uh, just at least try okay so that's all for today i think that will be enough for you to grasp uh, and i will share all these assignments for this one this one is easier and this one is also easy i will explain again if there is any issue and now i will try uh, so are you guys available for viva voce i can conduct this and uh, is it okay with everyone yes sir okay so uh, those who want to get their assignments checked so i can conduct the viva voce now and then you can quickly get your assignment graded now uh, otherwise uh, i have to call people again separately so that will be a wastage of time so it will be better that we conduct it now if you don't have any other uh, class or anything